On this episode of AV Week, we continue our conversation from Infocom 2019 in Orlando, Florida. We take a look at security, AV over IP, and soft codec. All that and more, next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is, is AV, AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 409, recorded Friday, June 14th, 2019. Infocom 2019, part two. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Chief, the global leader in commercial AV mounting solutions, and by Atlona, the go-to provider for AV signal distribution and control, and by Middle Atlantic, what great systems are built on. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap-up of audio-visual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host. This is part two of our coverage of Infocom 2019 and the AV Week special from Friday afternoon of Infocom. With me to start off this episode is Mr. Bradford Ben. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Tim. How are you? I have to put the disclaimer in. All these opinions are mine, not my employer, none of that stuff. If you don't like it, it's my fault. I speak for no one else but for Tim, because Tim loves me. <laughs> Matt Scott from Omega Audio Video. Do I do a disclaimer too? You it's should up probably to you. do one. Yeah, 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 you should do one my too. My opinions are always my own or Bradford's. Thank or you. not Tim's. I'm not 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 Tim. Thanks for having me though. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and God have mercy on, on Brian's soul for trying to keep us on time. Uh, yes, yeah, I work. Yeah. Last but not least, Kevin Iselli, who somehow drew the short straw. I did. Well, it's, a, it's but a height thing. I understand, as Bradford said, you love him, but I understand that 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So, remember, I signed his paycheck. That's oh, that's true. That's true. So yeah, Makes he it probably easier. loves you more. So let's move on from this. Uh, so, Matt, is I have to ask you, what was the new cool thing you saw here? Actually, at the no, show? You, you're the end user. That's we should start with you. It's when don't I hijack your show? But we should seriously, okay. you're the end I user. Will start. So, Welcome to the show. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Bradford. I'm is this your first time on? No, it's not his first time. Actually, second. Second time on. Good to have you. Thank you for coming. First long time, time caller, long time listener. You, yep. you, were, you were walking around the show floor mm -hmm. looking for new and exciting things. Yes. Uh, what did you find that caught your eye that was interesting? And why are you turning your and back to Kevin? what did you find? It's Kevin. <laughs> it's the most unsafe okay, thing I've so ever done. Moving on to something Yeah, what somewhat. have you seen? Okay, so I will say this. Love you, mean it. There were a couple things that were unique and interesting and new to me. Uh, I jokingly said the the most interesting thing I saw was the carpet in the Grand booth because it looked like hardwood floor and then I stepped on it and it went was whoa. Cushy. It was cushy. Yeah. So that was pretty amazing. I also really liked uh, the SHS uh, super hidden speaker. Strategic. Fr strategic hidden speaker from Atlas IED. Yes, they're a sponsor of ours. But that's not why I liked it. I liked it because I work in the experience industry. I build themed areas. That doesn't look like a ceiling speaker. So all of a sudden it's solving all sorts of problems and saving my industry. And it doesn't sound like one either. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's the other thing. I mean, seriously. Matt I have not I, heard it yet. Yeah, Matt and I have, have watched this for the last year and a half when he first introduced we, it. We, ISE yeah, we saw the, well, and even before that, we saw pre-production models. Yeah. We saw the first ever one in the wild, yeah. or in existence. But this morning, I actually got a chance to, sorry, no, no, so you feel part of it. Um, he's not part of it. Uh, I, I got a chance to go into their demo room before the demo started and sit in that experience area uh, that was hotel base where he had four of them in the ceiling. Beautiful. Yeah. They did not sound like they, like you would expect them to for being a two inch hole with a massive speaker pushing through a little metal hole. And, and it was fantastic. So I'm, I have a little, I'm now gonna have a little bone to pick with John because you guys got to hear it before me. Yes. So I'm a little disappointed. I'm Kevin, sorry. never do that to me. I, I would not Just so you know, I, I'm trying to involve Then involve don't yeah. ask yeah. me about the, the D80. So then the other thing that I thought Can was I pretty interesting is I like the Black Magic 8K stuff. Oh my gosh, yes because everyone's like, you don't need 8K, you don't need 8K. Oh. Same reason you don't need 3D. If I'm doing a 30 foot tall by 40 foot wall screen, 
I need eight, Kevin. True story. Okay, so hang on for a second, because this is something, I, Kevin and I have, have gone back and forth for years about the, the next generation of resolution. Yep. Where's the content, content commitment, right? That's something yep. that you and I, you, you continually ask me that when I say, oh, have you seen this? Well, where's, is that something where now that folks are showing 8K displays, a company like Blackmagic can come in and go, here's your content, or at least here's a way to get your content. It's a way to get your content. Yeah. So as Bradford said, absolutely, and especially in his, his world, when you go with that massive of a viewing situation, 4K isn't enough. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the conversations we even had when we started supporting 4K, and we, 4K, then 8K. At the same time, I was the same guy saying, can we get the 1080p and broadcast first? Right. But uh, it's absolutely true. As, those, uh, as the screen size increases, you have to have the resolution to match it. Otherwise, it looks goes back to watching screen doors like we did. Yeah. Now, I so. do agree that there's a certain thing of you have a 40 inch display, yeah. mm -hmm. that resolution is just because, wasted. Yes. Yes. You have absolutely. a 40 foot <clears throat> display and you want a pixel size that's less than a quarter of an inch. That's absolutely required. That's absolutely yeah. required. And in terms of where the, where's the content come from, for us, we render it ourselves, it's our product, and mm -hmm. we will stitch and render those pieces separately if we need to, so as to not, sh not crash the render engine. But I also see 8K being useful in the broadcast world for doing digital zoom on sports. Yes. Because how often does something go, like, a, like when the bears fumble, how often does the ball bounce out of the screen? Well, on the 8K, you can stretch it so you can see that ball bounce all the way out and get the safety. They are actually doing that in non-disclosed yes. uh, stadium I've, in New York I because no of that very reason. Yeah. The other thing that I was very impressed by is I got, to, I got a chance to sit down with Clearcom. And they have some really cool stuff. I can go through all the new stuff. But what most impressed me is they were talking and telling me about stuff that they've already existed that we just didn't know about. We being you and your team or we as an industry? Industry. I think it's a combination of both okay. because my team of a bunch of people all came from the industry. Some of them have only joined 30 days ago. Some have joined, you know, like me 18 months ago. But it's like we're looking at at comm systems, we're looking at other systems, and I see this and I'm like, this will solve a problem for me. This is a great new product. Oh, it's been out for a couple of years. The reason I'm impressed by that is because Clearcom didn't do the here's the new stuff. They did here's the problem solver for your problem. Okay. And so those were the ones that really got me. Now I can of course pretend I'm Jerry and say the best thing was the, the bubble fog the machine, bubble fog machine yes. that Uncle Richie brought. Yes. Uh, bought. Not purchased. Bought. Yes. Uh, so Acquired. he already brought it. He paid for it. He paid brought it home. Brought uh, it. So I can talk brought about it. that. But brought the other thing that was it. interesting to me is I took part broke. in a whole yeah, bunch of the Blue Loop seminars. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to teach two of them. You can figure out who I work for if you look at those. One of them is going to be online at Info. Uh, sorry, at Vixa as highlights of the Infocom show. I was very surprised at how many people kind of got that eye-opening experience of, oh, there's all these things and all these things that go into a theme park or into a movie or into a ride or into an experience. And the amount of AV people who sat in that room and went, whoa, was eye-opening. <laughs> the other thing I realized is that a lot of the theme park people don't talk AV, so I kind of sat there and translated it. The other thing that was really scary is uh, one of the gentlemen, uh, Sahim, yeah. One of the gentlemen from Falcon Creative got, got up and is talking about all these milestones in the interactive and theme park industry. And he's talking about these great things that happened in 1995 and 97. They were some of my first projects in the industry. So it was both very flattering <laughs> and, and, very and made depressing. me feel very yes. old because I'm like, yeah, I, that, that was cutting edge at the time. It's still cut, and, but it ran for 22 years, which I think is something important for us to take away. If something's good, if it meets the needs, if you take care of it, it can run for 22 years. Now I realize as a manufacturer and some, and some integrators, they're like, well, how does that help me? As an integrator, we were paying a lot of money to keep service up. Mm -hmm. We were buying new products. Because if something runs 22 years, there's nothing in electronics that's gonna last that long. Right, right. We went from 70 millimeter film to projection to newer higher res projection 
and it all kind of went through, but the same overall theory was there. And I think that's something we can learn from of, you're putting in a conference room. Mm -hmm. You guys have multiple conference room products, multiple streaming protocols, all that. True. So instead of doing the, you have to tear out the entire conference room and replace everything. The streaming protocol is better. Let's replace that. Right. Let's replace this little part. And you're able to constantly migrate and move through planned obsolescence, as I call well, it. And let's talk about that for a second, because I actually want to bring Kevin in on that. One of the things that this industry has gone through a an evolution, a civil war, <laughs> yeah, the, the AV over IP conversation. Yeah. That lends mm -hmm. itself to that, though. Absolutely. Once, yeah, putting, still putting, having that conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, Absolutely. It's still going on. Yeah. Yes. You don't say. You yes. Aren't. Huh. From 2003. I hadn't heard anything. It's from 2003. <laughs> when I showed you the banner. Convergence. Yeah, convergence. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely true. I mean, um, when you, the, you know, the delivery system can stay in place. Yeah. It's how do you improve the middle? Yeah. And that's kind of what we did this year as we're, we're showing our pixel perfect processing. We were already using a really good, uh, though be it entropy coder encoding technology with JPEG 2000, we listened to the feedback. Right, so it's great for cinema video and video quality, just outstanding. But yet, when you try to do PC stuff and with spreadsheets, it doesn't lend itself to that. So we changed it, and so the middle got nothing on the ends changed, and the infrastructure didn't change. We just changed the middle, and that's uh, it's been working out really good. We literally see the jaw drops of like, wow, that's the same product. It's the same product. That's that's the blessings of firmware. And one mm -hmm. of the one of the demonstrations <coughs> you guys had, you were playing a video game, right? Yes. Um, nothing wrong with playing video games. I no. Play video <laughs> games. Still waiting on, you know, um, the next Skyrim. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, me too. Uh, but, and, and just for the record, those of you who follow this, E3 was this week and Microsoft yes. announced their next generation, which supposedly so means the next generation of Skyrim. But just to remember, wow. they also introduced the, the oh, PS5, yes. which has real-time ray tracing, so audio actually moves along with the proper headset. Yeah. I'm like, 20 yeah, years ago, amazing. that was a lexicon. Uh, L480L that cost 20 some odd thousand dollars and now, oh, it's just a video game player. Now it's a $30 yeah. headset. Yeah. Yes, it has been fascinating because but you, on that you were playing, we were, you were putting video games yeah. through your AV over IP system. That's correct. It, people were playing it. Well, it was, not only was it going through, it was kind of a double whammy, right? Because we have what we call the DJ booth, similar like this, the, the player was sitting at the display. They had no idea that the console wasn't there. The console was actually back buried in the booth. So we were sending the USB traffic for the controller back, and what they were watching was the return feed through the network. Yeah. And it was at that point, they were like, no, it's directly there. It's like, no, it's really not. So they got, they got to experience the entire solution and what that feel was in real time. And not one, we haven't had anybody complain yet. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, one of the can't talk about projects is uh, just say a game developer has decided because of the dev kits to, to do with all of these are incredibly expensive. You look at you know $90,000 for a dev kit, uh, they're actually using a checkout system, almost like a library card. It's all NVX run and they have a central location where they have the, you know, the Sony, the Xbox, and, and even the Nintendos. They just put them all in one spot the dev goes and checks it out, schedules it, and it gets routed right to his death, and they just use it that way. Mm -hmm. Because those dev kits are pricey, right? Dang, really? Silence, dude. Yeah. No. Wow. Party right. fell. Mr. How old uh, are you? Mr. Oh Scott. Oh, I was going to jam um, to that, but yeah. what? What did, you, oh. what did you see this week that, that kind of wowed you? Besides me. Oh, I forgot the big you. one that made you say, holy cow. I'll, I'll do that. Then. You got to do that. Yeah. What did I see that, uh, sorry, his, his head went on my shoulders and yes. it was creepy. That wowed him too. That wowed you know, there, there is a... Oh, you you know, so there, there's an you. audience out there yeah, yeah. and no. I want to be able to pay Tim. Uh, fine. I guess we'll have to let him back in. Um, I saw a couple of products that were really fantastic, but what I would almost say was more impactful to me okay. was I, I got to sit through a couple of meetings as well as uh, some of the Tide conference and then some of the center stage content. Yep. And what I would say is, I've been going to Tide for a couple of years, and it's always been really good content, but very hard to quite often extrapolate how that is part of what we're going to do. And 
this year was the first time that I heard some things that came across and made me say, yeah, this is exactly where we are going to go. And it's not so much that we're going to get away from the nuts and bolts of mounts and projectors and speakers and all the fun stuff and the bread and butter that we do every day. But it's kind of to where you live now. There's a whole world out there that has so much potential for our industry to go and become artists. We're not just going to be the company that you call to say, hey, we've got this great idea and we want to do this and we need you to help us implement it. There will be times and opportunities for firms within our, our, our industry to create those things themselves and bring a package to a client and say, hey, you've got this lobby, we can do this. You've got this boardroom, you've got this outdoor environment, you've got whatever it is, and we can use technology to create something that's artistically beautiful, that, that creates a, an atmosphere, creates an emotion, or evokes an emotion from you. And I don't want to say that that's going to take over everyday AV, because I, I don't believe it will. But I think as AV uh, advances and evolves, it will become a bigger part and it will become a, a leading industry within you know, what it is that, that we do, that we all do every day. Um, Product-wise, there was a bunch of cool stuff. I, I don't want to dive too deep into that because it'll hit a bunch. Um, sure, uh, MXA, their new software update is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I also love the SHS. That's a beautiful product. Um, the TV1V. Or T1V. T T1V. Yeah. Um, we, we've seen products like that in the past. I've never played with one in a booth demo experience that didn't break throughout the demo at some point. And that's not, like it's a demo. We, we don't expect them to be perfect. Um, and it's a trade show floor too. Exactly. Lots of Wi-Fi. Yes, of and that that's what I, was, that's what I was getting at. There's not only function, it functioned really well in a trade show environment which makes me say, yes, we can, this is deployable at a cost that was more than acceptable. Um, there was a, a really cool mounting product that allows you to put 2U or 6U in front of a display, maintain ADA compliance, and just literally put it below the display. Holy now, cow. Yeah, it, it's the coolest little piece of metal. Is that the Heckler? Yes, the yeah. Heckler. Yeah. The Heckler's a beautiful That's product. Cool. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I, what I'm liking seeing is Yes, we saw 8K from Samsung. It's gorgeous. We love it. Um, I want one for my house. <laughs> but even if I don't have content, <laughs> well, I don't look, care. hold on. No, so no, we no. were talking this about this. Is my content. time? Hush. <laughs> God, I think your time is long. Time. Over. Yes, I want to talk to Tim. Tim, yeah, let's talk about PowerSoft. Let's talk about. So I'm sitting in the green room, and I go, Tim. Before we go and record, I want to you to take you to see something that I promise you will make you say, holy cow, dude. Yeah. Okay. And we walked oh, oh, across oh, the frosty. booth, and I took Brian, I yeah. took, we took Josh, Josh Pippins, and what did Tim do as soon as he got on this, and what was the product? Uh, it was called Power, it was a, it's a, it's a company's power soft, it's called a mover. And if you're watching the video, you can see my hands, but if you're not, it, it's a, what, two, three inch cube. It's a cube. three inch cube. Cube, okay, and then it has a driver in it, so it's piston at, at, at the bottom. And the, the demonstration they were showing was they, they put four of these mm -hmm. in a platform and you stood on the platform and put the VR headset on. Oh. And this, this you, you're following this ball through ice and canyons and stuff and it, you're, you're moving and the, the mover is lifting it with, along with the music. So it's music driven. There's not a whole lot of so software, get, my understanding. You get to right. vomit and have no, physical yeah. injuries. There is zero software. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no software with it, so you're just connecting the audio cool. output yeah. of the system to this box, to this, this cube. Want. Incredible experience. Experience, right? Back to Wivix and the but whole... It's interesting you say that, and you were fortunate enough to see our keynote at Masters. Yes. Right? Yeah. We're, this is great because we get to talk about the opposite of what that message was, yeah. right? Can, we get to talk about those texts. Can I, can I make a statement? No. No. <laughs> Shut up. Um, that won't lose our rating, right? No. no. Okay. So You could never lose our rating. I know. Both of them probably could. Absolutely. So one of the things that it's our goal. I'm conflicted over, and yes, we know, we talk about experience. Yep. We talk about atmosphere. We talk about evoking emotion. All these great things. And 
There's a booth that you could walk by. They have a, a, a bunch of LEDs. They're a wall. They're kind of wavy. And I was walking through with one of my reps. I took one hour out of the show to try and actually do some business. And we're walking through and he goes, oh my God, I love this. I haven't seen this yet. And I said, yeah, it's cool. Look at the video. It's a great application. The design is great. The video does not match the, 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 the form factor. And as someone who's in this, you, I, I you know exactly, exactly where I'm this. talking about. And I actually walked with some of my coworkers past it, and they did the, why aren't you telling me about this? And I went, look at it. Let, let's look at it a little more. Yeah. But what, what concerns me is that, and if you followed some of the Tide coverage, mm -hmm. um, you'll see this live on Twitter. We're trying so hard to get there, and a lot of people still can't put the two and two together. Exactly. They can't match them up. Right. It's a great demo, it looks awesome. What they're achieving is fantastic. But I almost wanted to grab Pip and say, hey, you got like four hours and five Mac Pros to render some video for me so we can create an actual immersive video product that they could then display on that and actually take advantage of the cool shapes that they created with it. Yeah. We're really close, but we are nowhere near close enough where we can start patting ourselves on the back and say, oh, we figured this out. We know how to create an experience. It's awesome. We're close, but we're not there yet. No, Unless you're Bradford. Unless and you're then, me. And, yeah. And then, you're, and then it's, it's 22 years old and still working. Yeah, yep. it's, it's going to take some more conversations and some more education about that. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Mr. Kevin Isali from Crestron, thank you. How do people oh, get a hold of you or Crestron? Uh, Crestron.com or K. Iselli at Crestron.com. All right. Mr. Scott. Well, no, we changed watch. that one. No, we changed it. I'm going to send you that cat control videos. Fake. You were control Yeah. Fake. You're going to send me what? Cat videos. Why? Mr. So Matt Scott, how do people get a hold of you? So uh, uh, you can find me on gracious. Twitter at Matt D. Scott. You can find me here at AV Nation hosting Resi Week. You can find me uh, at Omega Audio Video uh, pretty much anywhere. I'm not that hard to find. No. It's like a cockroach. Bradford. So you can find me on Twitter at Bradford Ben. You can find me uh, at BradfordBen.com. You can find me at AV Nation where I'm usually lampooning Tim and his bears. But congratulations to the Blues. Yes, to yes. the Blues. And nice job. also, I have one more thing to do, which is Matt oh, autographed yes. a bottle of hair product that Moose, I purchased no less. for him. Moose. It's very and Canadian. And I will be tweeting out as to how you can enter and win. The video will be, will have already been posted by the time this Sad shows up. I have no use for that. Thank oh, you guys we'll, so much. We'll get you a, a little style before you leave. Matt, Matt, okay, Matt, cool. Just thank you guys Matt. so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, part two of part two, I guess. So you guys are part four. Uh, which is I propose since there are four of you now uh, with me to finish off this Infocom 2019 special, Mr. G, Steve Greenblatt from Creative uh, from Control Concepts. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. All right, uh, Mr. Harry Mead, who at this point I have no idea where you work, and you won't. Okay, there you go. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. All right, Mr. Chris Netto from Staring. How are you? I'm doing well, Tim. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. And last but not least. Brother from another mother, Mr. George Tucker. Good to be here. Good to see you, man. Yes. So, two of you, well, I know you, you were at a manufacturer's booth last year mm -hmm. again, too. So, uh, but George, you were in a booth for the first time in a number of years. A number of years, yeah. Uh, I didn't say how many, I just said well, number. Done. You had hair last time you were in a booth. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, first, tell, tell us about your company, but, but what, you were, what you guys were doing here. Oh, well, uh, Sound Associates is a rental and staging company that also manufactures. Uh, IR listening assistive listening service systems and captioning and audio description services for theaters. Okay. Around since 1945. So. And you've been bouncing around the country, including St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, and put fine, fine dinner. You yeah. Out to on that day. Yes, indeed. Yeah, but no, but you've been going around the country and seeing different theaters and, and doing yeah. this work there. Yeah, 16 cities in less than two months. So. Jeez. Yeah. Really beautiful theaters. Some that take your breath away, and some are just great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, like, well, yeah, like, like the like Fox the same Fox and Yeah, Fox and yeah. 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 We, We're kind of fond of it. Yeah. It's, the, it's not the only theater we have, but it's, it's, it's a special one. Um, Mr. Netto, uh, yes. you guys at Starin did a couple interesting things this week. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, you had a, um, a uh, podcasting boot camp. Yes, uh, we did. Board. Explain that. What, what Base Camp that. was Base a, camp, uh, right. was a uh, little podcast station that I uh, put together and uh, specifically keeping out a lot of the big guys, uh, giving an opportunity to the the indie guys, the guys that maybe nobody heard of, uh, you know, 
take it back, what, five years, six years since you've been around? We were those, eight. those little eight years eight, in yeah. the making. Eight years ago, something like this would have, would have, would have boosted you yeah. and a couple others that were trying to crack into that. So, you know, give a little back to that whole thing. Give opportunities to like Mr. Mead and his non-com buddies. Uh, it's kind of a sideshow show circus, but it wasn't exactly him that was actually going crazy. It was Mr. Joe Way with the beach ball asking people to take questions, and then he threw beach balls at people and yeah, swag and things. We weren't the most nuts. Believe of, it or not. We actually had slight professionalism, especially today. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. They played they played Mario Kart or uh, uh, Super, Super Smash Ma Brothers. We played Super Smash minutes. Brothers, and apparently... If there is so much Wi-Fi on this floor, and apparently that interferes with the Nintendo Switch controllers, oh, it's, it's not you. You if you brought opened up your your phone or your your computer. oh I counted seventy five on yeah. one round, but it it interferes with the Nintendo Switch controllers. So basically, you'd be like sitting there doing Smash Brothery things. I've never played the thing before. And then all of a sudden, your guy would just walk off the screen. <laughs> it's very good, very cool, very random of uh, them to just say, this is what we want to do. But hey, man, everybody, every show, everybody that showed up came up with something different. Uh, we had everybody from uh, Dave Maldo, who's been a, an analyst for the industry for many years, who's had a podcast. Let's do video. Let's do video. And he mm. brought it out to the show floor for the first time. Awesome. Uh, Nomcom never did anything that was organized other than you know, some the truth. wacky pictures that they post on the internet uh, and tell people <laughs> this is what they're experiencing while not being at Infocom, but they brought it to Infocom and the irony of being non-com at yeah, Infocom, Infocom was kind of, was meta, kind of there. Actually. It was very meta, so congratulations, Harry and, and Art Danner. Uh, and a couple others that uh, did uh, some really cool things. Uh, Michelle Lorette brought her own podcast that she's been working on, AV Mostly, and it was really cool to see that, and a lot of it was very simple stuff. It was just, uh, you know, Getting down and dirty, we advertised. Uh, we basically created the poster to make resemble those '80s rock posters that you would see outside a nightclub, and it became like a Lollapalooza fest of uh, podcasts. And these guys treated it that way. They they were out there making noise and drew a crowd, and it was it was it was good, very good, very good experience. Awesome. Mr. Greenblatt, uh, you brought a number of your folks, your your team here. What what's, uh, we, some of them are engineers, some of them are programmers. You also brought um, you know your running shoes this morning. Um, talk for a second about the importance of, of the Avixa Foundation. And this morning, uh, there was the, the 5K sure. uh, run that you participated in. God love you. Um, you know, early morning in I, I clapped. Orlando. You clapped. Yeah, I, was, I was here in the office. Pea soup. So, um, what, excuse me, what, what's the importance of the Avixa Foundation and, and the, the 5K this morning? Well, as far as the 5K is concerned, you know, first, whenever there's a 5K that has a good cause and that is also in, with, involved in the industry, it was a no-brainer for me to, to participate and try to get a team together. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think was great is that everybody got to see each other in a different setting. And I think that when you get people together and, and things like that, you start to build community and you start to, to introduce people to new experiences and, and also break down maybe some barriers. Uh, and I think that there was a lot of team camaraderie. There was a lot of spirit involved. And, and, uh, and I think afterward, everybody was congratulating each other. So it gave a lot of energy to the last day of the show. Yeah. You know, as far as the foundation's concerned, I think one of the things that they're looking to toward, which is real important, is bringing uh, younger people into the industry. And I'm 100% behind that. And uh, I think that that's something that we all should be thinking about, especially being that none of us are getting any younger, unfortunately. Speak for yourself. I'm immortal. <laughs> uh, Harry and, and Steve actually, I'm gonna pick on you two, uh, as folks, the two who are not, uh, were not in a booth this week, and I'll pick on the other two that were. That were. Um, Harry, what did you see this week that, that knocked your socks off? Um, well, it was interesting because this is my first time being here, kind of on the end user side, mm -hmm. um, since I now work for an agency in the DC area, um, <laughs> supporting a campus-wide infrastructure. Um, we were looking for very specific things, and we have very specific requirements <laughs> for you, those did things. Did you find them? Mostly. Okay. Um, uh, it, it's geopolitical things are very interesting, and it has some people are actually changing how they're doing business based on on some of the geopolitical things which is going to make it easier for us because they're going to start manufacturing things from countries that we can actually buy from um 
And uh, so that was good. Um, a lot of what we were looking at is just getting up to speed on AV over IP um, because we're trying to, uh, two years ago in this room on the other side of the room, um, I said, the middle of AV is dead. It just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. I see that more and more. Okay, we are almost this close to having nothing in the middle except a network switch. Yeah. Um, the mm -hmm. last component that we, and we were searching for it today, was we wanted ceiling speakers with a Dante in. Hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And they are thin on the ground right now. Yeah. We've been promised, like within a few months, there's going to be some that'll, that are going to be announced. There will be. But mm -hmm. right now, it's a little thin on the ground. But the, the goal, our goal, is to make Cat6 the only cable that we use. Okay. And, uh, and we were able to do that for the most part with almost everything. Um, so we were looking at that, um, <clears throat> looking at different, uh, at, at video conferencing, because it's very interesting. Again, I, a couple months ago, I was on the corporate side, now I'm on the government side. And you, everything all over the floor is Zoom, blue jeans, all the soft codecs. Mm -hmm. None of them I can use. Yet. Mm. Yet. Yet. We'll see. I, I, I will, you know what, I yeah. bet you, what was it, three years ago, about voice control in corporate, I'll bet you now. Yet. Mm -hmm. One of them. And I would put my money on, on Zoom, just personally. I, I, I don't own stock, they're not a sponsor. I'm just telling you that they're quickly working towards that. Okay, I, I just know where I am, cloud is a very bad word. Cloud is a four letter word. <laughs> it, it, it is and it isn't. So here, and, and, and see, we'll get you a second on that. The, the number of about two, three months ago, I was watching uh, the DOD is, is putting together uh, a bid. They're, they're, they're bidding out uh, a project they're calling Jedi, right? Now, they're not, the Jedi is not handling anything secure, so let me be clear about that. Yeah. There is no, no security uh, things happening, but they're still moving a large proportion of their, um, their software to the cloud. That's what Jedi is. Mm. The two that are left is Microsoft Azure and Amazon S3. They're doing this big, ginormous lift up into the cloud, so they're, they're starting the process, which is why kind of maybe I, I'm more bullish than you. Um. I just know that endpoints are the are the word of the day, and I so I was looking at hard codecs. Yeah, I mean they and still make them. They, yes. I was gonna say yes, they still make them because some of us are very it. secure yeah. And yeah. conscious. Yeah, yeah. and uh, um, because right now they control <clears throat> everything. On, on site. I love when you talk 1998, dude. It's so, <laughs> Steve, it's so awesome. What what wowed you this week, Steve? <laughs> oh, <okay>. um, <clears throat> I think we're starting to talk about interoperability again. You okay. know, I, I think that there was a lot of years where there, there was a lot of focus on on trying to have a full solution, and now. I think a lot of the manufacturers are starting to talk to each other and say, how can we make our stuff work together, which is real important. And I think that, that that's going to add more value. Um, experience, of course, is a big buzzword, too. But uh, I, I think the, uh, and we, we've had some really good conversations about how, how can you take a product now and, and leverage its capabilities and maybe think of using it in other ways that even the manufacturer wasn't thinking of in, in developing it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the two um, exhibitors here, we'll talk, start with you, Mr. Tucker. What did you hear? I, I obviously, I mean, and, and it's always difficult, right? It's always a, a, a kind of a crapshoot when, when we have people who exhibit on this specific episode, right? Because mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, well, I, I didn't say anything because I was in my, in my booth. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, but you at least <laughs> talked to folks, right? And yeah. what were you hearing from the folks who did come to your booth? Well, I mean, I don't think there was anything truly innovative, although I did get a chance to roam. Mm -hmm. um, did, we do get a chance to roam. So I saw a number of things like the Epson, uh, the all-in-one LED. It's mm -hmm. 130, I don't know if anyone else saw the 130-inch screen that comes in two parts and comes together. Okay. The panels can be removed with a special tool and self-calibrate when you put them back. Oh, wow. 
So, you know, not outdoor, only 1080p, but it was really a cool box. Um, there's, you know, there was a couple of things, like the K-Array, I don't know if anybody went by the K-Array booth. They've got their, you know, Anaconda and their other mm -hmm. stuff, but they also have those very little, uh, they call them lizards. Yep. The little tiny look like jewels, and they sound actually pretty sweet. And they also had a version of lighting, LED lighting for retail that had speakers in them. Can you read it? Yeah. Okay. It was, yeah, it's really kind of cool stuff. Uh, you know, for the commercial side, it really works. Um, it, then to that end, what else did I see? I saw the, um, <laughs> my favorite of the show is the Cozy Roadie. Did you see the Cozy Roadie? No. It's a office chair collapsible into a hard road case. <laughs> for oh, the, yeah. For the I TD who needs everything. Did I saw <laughs> those. I saw those down. Did, come on, that's a show winner. Hands down. Yeah. I think Mark Coxon wrote an article about that. Oh, did he really? Did, about a chair. Yeah. But it was a fake chair, and now they, somebody must yep. have really read the it. Cozy the Cozy Road. It's over in the staging area. <laughs> yeah. All right. Collapses right into the box, and it's really good. Uh, on the staging side, you know, it's all pretty much uh, it's just progression. You know, I mean, there was the foggers, and there's the frog fogger. I think somebody here bought one of the bubble machines. Uncle Richie, they, yeah, Uncle Richie bought one. But they also make something called the Aqua which actually is a uh, development without ice, water, and a minimal fog fluid to keep it at a spe specified level. Yeah. So they know exactly where they can put it based on the water content, and it's kind of really cool. That is cool. When you yeah. need that, you know, you don't want to get in, in, in the way of the sets or the actors. It yeah. really does work well. Yeah, and, and, and that, that chemistry is, is always, has, always, has traditionally been very difficult, mm. right, to keeping it at that, so, uh, maintaining that level. Right, without and, the heavy, heavy vapor yeah. fog, that stuff that gets over everything and, yeah. and things like that, yeah. Uh, and that was, that was really it. I did see, did anyone else see fuel lighting? They're look, almost like stage lights, but they're battery powered. Six to 10 hours, LED, different filters, different color changers. I wouldn't use it on every set site, but man, for a studio kind of thing, it really looked pretty cool and inexpensive as all get out. So okay. it looks like it would be lasting. Very cool. Yeah. And Gilda Fluke was here. Again, call, a shout out to Gilda Fluke. They're here every year. Servos, robots. Show control. You just are saying it's, that because you like their name. I like their name. <laughs> <laughs> it rolls Miss, off the tongue. It does. Mr. Neto, from going from your, your booth to your outside in the, in the general area, uh, zombie uh, survival area, what did you say? Um, see and heard. Uh, DuPont had a wacky table. Okay. Believe it or not, DuPont, the DuPont company, came with a table that was uh, with embedded with technology into it. The entire surface was power. There it goes. Light it up. Yeah. It had speakers built in. It had all these things built in. And I was just like, I didn't expect that. All right. uh, from a, you know, something close to the heart for me was, uh, you know, as a, as a former designer and an integrator, I spent a lot of time trying to hide equipment behind TVs. And uh, I got to see the Heckler uh, credenza, which is a 2RU space. Mm -hmm. uh, when you came over, I was like, dude, I think this kind of solves a little problem. I love the, 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 the insignificant little products that kind of just solve problems. And in this case, mm -hmm. many times we've outgrown what the chief pack box or other types of, of, of in-wall boxes do. And you're out of gadgets. And now you're looking to double up layers and stuff like that. And this thing was a nice wide, you know, 2RU, uh, 4RU, 6RU, whichever one you want, and depending on the one you got, you can actually get by without the ADA requirement. Mm -hmm. So it's not sticking out, it can actually help you keep that away. So that was pretty cool. Uh, the other thing, I got to uh, walk around the show and actually, while y'all's cell phones weren't working, I had systems to get out because I had a live pack on my back and mm -hmm. got to test that out. Not only did I get to test that out on an RV coming down, but we also were able to uh, you know, I fired it up, I went on my own uh, Periscope, and I walked the show, the entire show, from one end to the next. Wow. I know I'm slim, I'm trim now after doing that, but after <laughs> doing that, uh, that walk and not have a failure come down, um, that was pretty cool because I know that we're basically in a Faraday cage, and yeah. this is just not good, we just can't get signals out. So that was a pretty good test to that, and if 65 miles an hour going down a Georgia highway watching ICBMs on the side of the road is not a testament to what the power of of, of what uh, our uh, cell phones can do these days, because essentially, if you would have told me that, it would, the only way we would ever been able to do that in the past would have been through a satellite. Mm -hmm. So those are three things that stuck out for me. Obviously, uh, I uh, uh, the big conversations that I had uh, as integrators came into the booth, because I, as a distributor, I work with with with, yeah. uh, with integrators a lot more, was the understanding of the soft codec. Um, there's still it's a service, and the service is a question mark. How do I what do I, 
how can I, yeah. is always in that conversation. And when you're selling something that is magically up in a cloud mm -hmm. and just does things that just works, what is, where is the, you know, and the, anybody who's here is here because they are in the business of, of making money and they want to make money. Is it in the cloud or is it in the peripherals? For AV people, the traditionalists, it's typically in the boxes. The boxes have shrunk, the boxes are tiny, the boxes can be found in weird places. So a lot of it was, it was education. It was an education of why don't you just go buy direct? Why are you still buying here? What is the difference between certified and uh, in, in Zoom's case, PSO certified? You know, there's different types of products and different things that happen when things update for many years. You know, if you updated a system that had a control system and you know, it was your VTC codec that needed that software update. Next thing you know, your touch control wasn't working with it. Or if you did the vice versa, and now your microphone wasn't working with it. So, you know, having certified products and understanding the two was a big deal because that's the best way I could explain to an old school integrator that, hey, remember when we, served, when we send software upgrades to things and your camera wouldn't work or you couldn't turn left on your camera? <laughs> well, basically now when you certify it, all these products are getting tunneled in and are all getting dialed in. So that's a big thing. When you start talking about ecosystems and cloud, you need everything to start, you know, harmonizing. Yep. And that's a that that's a big thing. So. Absolutely. All right, guys, that'll be a good place to stop it. Mr. Steve Greenblatt, how do people find you? You can find my company, Control Concepts, at controlconcepts.net or on social, Steve Greenblatt, and on the State of Control, aviation TV. Absolutely, Mr. Harry Mead. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, AV Grump. Um, Otherwise, I'll find you. <laughs> Chris Neto, people find you or Starin. I, I, I don't know if I want to be, be found honest. after, <laughs> after <laughs> I just heard that. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling a little uncomfortable now. And you're standing right next to him. So I know. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could be found on, uh, <laughs> on Twitter at underscore Chris Neto on Sundays. No, I do a little Chris chat. Chris underscore Neto. Uh, yeah, I could do that too. Okay. Uh, Chris <laughs> underscore Neto. On Sundays, you can find me talking on the AV and the AM, I'm sure tomorrow, or, well, this will be aired at a later date, but the Sunday after Infocom will be an interesting conversation regarding what people saw. Uh, you can find my uh, company, the company I work for, uh, Starin, at Starin.biz, and on the Twitters at, at Starin underscore MKG. All right, very good. Mr. Tucker? Uh, as always, Tucker Twos. Uh, I'm also working for soundassociates.com. You can find us anywhere in New York. Uh, and there's some various video projects and other wings I'm working on that will come around uh, late summer, early fall. You can look out for it. Very cool. Wait, can we, before you go off the air, can we have a round of applause for Mr. Albright? I mean, the guy was running around humping cameras. I just want to, you never get credit, man. You are just moving around the show floor. You are an animal, and we appreciate it. Not Thank you. for a fat guy, huh? No. Well, I'm, I know how it feels. All right. <laughs> for you for money. Me. Yeah. Uh, for Tim Albright, <laughs> don't, don't follow me um, unless you're a Blues fan because uh, I'm still celebrating the fact that they won their first ever Stanley Cup. Uh, but go by the website, avianation.tv. That's avianation.tv. You'll find this program and a host of others. While you're there, please check out our supporter section. These are the folks who help us financially and help bring you Infocom 2019 coverage. So all that and more at avianation.tv. That's avianation.tv. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. That's all the time we have for AV Week.